<laughs> okay, Dr. Usims. Yes. You're putting on a sled dog race of sorts? Well, it's a demo sprint race. So what we have is we have four teams coming from Salmo, Elmagar, this kennel, Spirit of the North Kennel, is supplying us with four teams with four dogs each. And these are all experienced mushers that are going to run the trail for us. And they're going to start them just over here by the start banner, um, one to two minutes apart. And the loop is a little over a mile long. And they'll do one loop and then maybe give some tours. A couple of the guys are talking about ski drawing it as well. Okay. I just want to introduce the uh, gentleman, Al McGaw, here from Selmo. Uh, the spirit of the North Kennels. Yes, right. And his team, his three teams today, consisting of four, uh, four dog teams. Right. And Al, can I pass this over to you for a moment just to give sure. a brief description? Okay. Uh, these dogs are called Alaskan Huskies. They're crossbred dog, designer bred for this sport. Their bloodlines trace back to the northern Indian village dogs which is the spark plug, what, what makes these dogs so crazy to run and pull. And then to that spark plug, that basis, every breeder's got their own idea of how to build a, can a canine hot rod. Uh, they've, they've been bred so carefully over the years that now the, the DNA satellites, the DNA markers, show up stronger on these dogs as a breed as either Siberians or Malamutes do. Uh, because they're bred as a, for a purpose, not for their appearance, but for what they can do. Um, it's almost a Darwinian evolution of what, of course, it, it seems strange that you could start with a Labrador and somebody else starts with a German Sherhood Pointer and somebody else starts with a Saluki and so on. And crossbreeding and wind up with the same dog. But when you think about it, all dogs go back to the wolf, the gray wolf. And the gray wolf has all the DNA satellites, all the markers. And if you keep picking the dogs that are doing the best job, those DNA markers are going to accumulate. So it doesn't matter what breed one into the makeup of the dog. It's the fact that you've been breeding the best of the best. I get pictures from around the world of people's dogs. And it's so often amazing. Somebody's best dog in the kennel, you'd swear it was from the same litter as my best dog in the kennel. Without the same breeds that went into make it at all. It's, a, it's an addictive sport. You get into it and you can't not do it. I've been doing it for 35 years. I'm 74 years old and I don't want to quit. You know? I should have quit a long time ago. But... Anyway, uh, we're going to time it so we started at a quarter two. So that, uh, you know, if anybody wants to get warm up quick or something but hey, hey. thanks for having us here well thank you <laughs> well. And she's from Selmo. She came over with uh, Al as well. So I want to just introduce one of the dogs here. If you'll notice, quiet little Bacchus here in the front. He's been studying that trail for the last half hour. And I believe the dog on the other side, his name is Echo. Echo. So we'll have an opportunity after the race to uh, come and speak to the mushers individually. They'll have the dogs back here at the truck. That's a story. Oh, we've got a story about Echo. Oh, we have a story. This is Echo. Echo is this dog on the back of the truck here, the tail furiously wagging. When he was about five weeks old, he went blind in one eye. I thought it was from an injury. But he's been a, a wonderful dog. He was always on my best team as, a, as one of the wheel dogs right next to the sled, him and his brother. This past summer, he went blind in the other eye. And so I can't run him in my main team, although he still loves to run. And the funny thing is, his brother Ajax doesn't have any enthusiasm for running in my main team anymore. He wants to run beside his brother. <laughs> but the weirdest thing happened this, this year. 
coat didn't shed his winter coat. He shed all the guard hairs. So I took him to the vet. And, and they did uh, tests on him. And uh, it's determined that it appears that the circadian rhythm is keyed by the blue light of morning and the red light of night. At night time, the pineal gland uh, releases uh, melatonin to, to key the... Uh, uh, another gland. <laughs> anyway, it's very tough, your doctor. <laughs> what's happened is because he can't see, he doesn't get any light. So it screwed up his coat. So I've got him on melatonin pills now for four pills a day. And you can see the black hair starting to show on him. He's growing his guard hair back. And this, this poor guy's totally blind, doesn't get any light at all. You watch him and start shooting. He's just giving it for all he's worth. And still how old is Echo? Five years old. Five years old. Echo's five. Wow. Thank, thank you so much, Al. We'll let you get the teams ready. Ridiculous. Right, let's try 
Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Yeah.